Now, many of us are, of course, spending more time with our loved ones over the summer break. Fun for some and full of tension for others. Our relationship expert, Paul Carrick Brunson, is here with must-have advice just in, in a moment. First, though, um, you have been sharing what stresses you out most about your family during the summer holidays. I think for me, it's just having less food because you've got to share it. We just recently went to Amsterdam. I want to sit in the window seat. She wants to sit there. We had an argument for a good five minutes. Everything costs a lot. So yeah, that maybe that's stressful. stressful for parents. We're running everywhere and we're trying to find the best place to eat. I guess I like a lot of my independent time. I love my mom and everything and she's my everything, but sometimes I think I get a bit overbearing. I love it. More, more time with my family, the better it is, yeah. Oh, Paul. <laughs> All of those comments will resonate with lots of different people. I mean, yes. where do you start? Oh, my gosh. I think I feel the same way about my mom. I love her. <laughs> She's a little <laughs> overbearing. Mom, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, you know what? I think here's where we need to start. We need to start with knowing that this happens to all of us, which is fine, right? This is all good. But you know how we have relationship goals? I think we need to have holiday goals. Oh, right? that's an interesting concept. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Now, a holiday goal to me is an overarching theme. What do you want out of this holiday? Do you want it to be fun, relaxing, adventurous, right? I like a little culture, uh -huh. but it's very important to identify those goals, talk about it openly with your family, and then schedule it in so that those goals are met and you're happier, right? It's very important. Another one is what my wife and I call, what are the big three things that you wanna see, that you can't wait to see? And we did this a lot with our boys who are six and nine years old. And they would argue all the time when we went on vacations and we would show them videos before we would go on holiday and say, what are three things that you wanna see? Write them down, draw them. And that expectation allows for them to be happier throughout the holiday. So when my youngest saw the Royal Pavilion in Brighton, or, you know, or my oldest saw the York Minster you know, uh -huh. for the first time, they were just in so much awe, less stress, less arguments. And then number three, most important, especially for the introverts, is you need to take a break. Yes. You need to take a break. I was waiting for that bit. Yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> yes. One to two hours a day to do nothing. That way you can revive, refresh, come back together, less arguments. So talking beforehand, very, very crucial. Try and get some sort of a plan. Now you mentioned your, your children there, Paul, and again, this will resonate with so many. How do you stop them from fighting or sibling, <laughs> sibling rivalry? All the things that comes with when your children spend a long time together. <laughs> yes, I have been there, I've seen it, and here's my thoughts on this. One thing is that on holiday, we have to admit that holidays become very competitive. If you're playing sports or board games or card games, instead try to reduce the competitive environment and instead focus on individual passions. Yeah. Maybe you have a child who loves to go outdoors, so allow them to lead the outdoor expedition for the mm -hmm. family. Maybe there is a child who loves art, allow them to take everyone to the art gallery, right? Celebrate the individual passions and elevate them to a leadership role. That's very important. So when the other one is moaning that they're at the art gallery and they don't want to be there, you have to then play it, I guess, by saying, yes, but this is this child's day and we're gonna do your thing another day and, and constantly sort of balance it that way. Absolutely, allow it them teaches each... them to be patient as well, doesn't have, it? And you know, you're, you're right, patient and to lead, mm. which is so important. And then the other piece is that we want to cultivate a teamwork environment, right? So they can support each other. When we were on a recent holiday in Jamaica, we volunteered, the entire family, we volunteered at a school, but we had our boys to paint a mural together. Oh yeah, that's nice. N yes, now did they argue? Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> yeah they argued. <laughs> but at the end of the day, they completed the mural, they completed a goal, and they were proud of it. Mm. And I think what's very important is we have to understand that a sibling rivalry is normal. And we shouldn't try to eliminate the rivalry because there's lots of skills they can learn in that rivalry. They can learn to compromise and negotiate. Instead, we just want to manage it. Manage it, exactly. Now, let's, um, let's do a bit of a shout out for the grandparents. Uh, grandparents all over the land right now, working hard, looking after children and everything else. Yes. Um, what if a grandparent wants to say no to babysitting today? Oh well, how do you deal with that? Very hard. Very hard for the grandparent because they want to be there for their grandchildren and their, and their child as well. But I say it's very important to be honest and clear, be direct and say, look, I'm there. I love my grandchild, right? But 
I also love me and I need energy and I need private space so that I can show up and be my best self for my grandchild. Mm -hmm. And I think that for grandparents, it's very important to set boundaries. And here's a, a, a self boundary masterclass right now. One is that you wanna be assertive, but kind. Also try to use I statements instead of you statements. So you'll say I need, or I feel opposed to you need, yeah. you feel this, because that keeps you away from blaming. Of course. Consistency also is, is key. The moment that you allow the boundary to be overstepped, it will always be overstepped in the future. And then last but not least is don't feel guilty. Mm. You know you love your grandchild, but you also know you love you yeah. and you need your own privacy. You just need time. the energy to, to be able to continue to help. Very quickly, what would you do if you saw this on holiday? Yeah. <laughs> it's what you call bedlam at a sun lounger. I mean, and actually to be fair, I've seen even worse than that again, where it, the, the queue just keeps coming and coming. There's proper arguments. Fights. Fights break Fights. out over this. Yes. I think there's, there's two things here. One is realize there are many sunspots on holiday, right? <laughs> Wherever the sun is shining, that's a sunspot where it lands, right? That's, that's one. But also, this is the New Yorker in me, is oh, yeah. go to the concierge, bring a couple pounds. <laughs> <laughs> bribery then. No, no, no. <laughs> tipping. Not bribery. Tipping. Tipping. Okay. Yes. We'll all remember that. Yes, I like that one. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you.